last time you took a history course? I mean, really dived into a history textbook. It's been years, right? But yet, you still learn American history every single day. How? History is told across the landscape of America. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. But wait, there's just one problem. Often the history that you see across the landscape does not reflect total truth. It often misrepresents people or events as they actually occurred, or worse, it omits portions of history as if it never happened. See, when you chop up history, add this filler in, twist this part, flip this part upside down, and take this chunk out, what you're left with is a mess that leaves everyone ignorant. So we're taking a road trip across America so that we can find many of these misrepresentations and correct them. First stop is Beach Island, South Carolina. The first marker, the Beach Island Agriculture Club. Let's read it together. On January 5th, 1856, Governor James Hammond and 11 other farmers of this area organized the Beach Island Agriculture Club for the diffusion of the agricultural knowledge and the regulation of illegal slave traffic. Monthly meetings and barbecues have been held almost without interruption since the club's founding. Well, isn't Governor James Hammond a great guy, along with his farmers? This was a popular organization. They even had the likes of President William Taft and John B. Rockefeller to come by and meet with them. Now this was an organization that I would have inspired to be a part of. Until I learned the truth. While the Beach Island Agriculture Club did meet to talk about their crops and even to have a little barbecue and fellowship, that was not the sole purpose of this organization. So let's see how we have misrepresented history. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Teasing. Seriously, drop the marker. All right, the first thing, the original name, the Beach Island Agricultural and Police Society. And can someone please tell me what this sentence means? Maybe they were helping to get rid of slavery. Uh, no. The truth? Around the time of this police society, abolitionists were popping up everywhere. Blacks were tired of the oppressive slave system, and they were taking a stance against it even if it cost them their lives. Well, even in states where blacks outnumber whites, they began to fear that the abolitionist fever would spread to their slaves. And then, spark a revolt. See, on many plantations in southeastern states, there was typically the slave master, a handful of overseers, and hundreds of slaves. It was out of this fear and the need to protect their business, their wealth, and themselves that the likes of Governor James Hammond and the 11 farmers started this police society with the objective to patrol the slaves and keep them under control. See, this scenario is what started the American police and patrol system. It was a paid and volunteer organization purposed to control minorities, protect the land stolen from Native Americans, and the institution of slavery, and to keep economic order. Now, how was James Hammond going to do that? Objective number one, stop black church service. stated that it's very easy to convert a religious organization into a military one and these Negro churches must be put down. Not that he was completely successful, but he did manage to put white ministers in black churches with the purpose of creating a docile environment. Objective number two, Hammond changed the labor system to gang labor. 
See, some plantations would give a daily task. You had to complete this task by the end of the day. Now, when you take your break, you take your break. But you better have this task finished by the end of the day. Oh, but not Hammond. He made it a point to change the labor system. Working slaves from sunup to sundown, giving specified breaks, and having an overseer over your back constantly intimidating. See, he knew that that system would take the fight out of people. You have no time to think, no time to be creative, no time to pull together against a system of oppression. And objective number three was your typical patrol tactics. See, many patrolmen were also members of the KKK, red shirts, white league, or similar organization. Out of a great book, Lies Across America, a white South Carolinian after the Civil War wrote about former patrolmen, bragging about how they would often hunt down runaway Negroes with hounds and guns, brand them, beat them till senseless, and while patrolling at night, flog Negroes who had passes just to hear them beg. Even if slaves were simply running errands for their owners, they feared the patrol system. And the Beach Island Agricultural and Police Society didn't just patrol their area. They lent their services to other cities in need. Today, not only do they have this marker, but Hammond's home is also a popular tourist site where people can learn trinkets of history. And as for the Beach Island Agricultural and Police Agriculture Club, they still meet to this day. Yes, 158 years later. And I'm sure they are still talking about crops, fruits, and vegetables. Please understand that I'm not singling this organization out because there are similar organizations all across America. But what's also similar is how the history is hidden. And when it's hidden, it leaves you confused. So you will never understand how great your ancestors actually were until you understand the magnitude of the system that they had to face. And you can only understand that by learning history that was never taught.